the Gospel of Matthew chapter 25. Praise God. I want to begin reading at verse 31. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 25 beginning at verse 31. Jesus Christ is the speaker in this verse. And he brings it out. He said, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divided the sheep from the goats and he shall set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on the left then shall the king say unto them on his right hand come ye blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world for I was hungered and you gave me meat and I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison. And you came unto me. And then shall the righteous answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee hungry and fed thee thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw thee a stranger, we took thee in, or naked and clothed thee. Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it, unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for this opportunity to stand before your people. I pray you will give me the words that I may speak the oracles of God. May we edify the house. May we receive understanding and carry out the command of God in this day and time. And we give God the praise to his son who he sent to be the savior of the world. Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Again we are coming out of the gospel of Matthew chapter 25. We read verses 31 through verse number 40. And I want you to know that when we get down to verse 35, all the way to verse number 40, Jesus makes some great points when he began to speak concerning how he was hungry and how he was thirsty. And how he was a stranger. How he was naked. And then he says how he was sick. And how he was in prison. Now, Jesus is giving us a metaphor. Because he's not actually speaking about himself. He's actually speaking about humanity in their hurt condition. But he says, the least you do to them, you have done it unto me. Praise God. And when we look at the text here, we see these particular people that are hurting, that are in need of the touch of God. They received a visitation 
from them that are righteous in Christ Jesus. Do you not know the power of a visit? Hallelujah. I'm going to say that again. Do you not know the power of a visit? Praise God. Because in the text, we see the righteous visiting them that are hurting and have great need. Amen. And notice these types of people are grossly overlooked. They are deemed to not be significant. Many step over them as if they are not important. But that is not how Jesus looks at it. Amen. 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 He said, these that are hungry and these that are thirsty and these that are a stranger and these that are naked and these that are sick and these that are in prison he said the least you do to them you've done it unto me because please understand it is the will of God that we minister to Where we come from. We can never lift our nose up at anybody. Because the scripture brings it out on the day of judgment. He said, The Son of Man shall come in his glory, all of his holy angels with him. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations. He shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Praise God. Now the sheep are referring to the righteous. And the apostle teaches us in 1 John, they that do it righteous is righteous, for he is righteous. And the righteous walk in God's love. Come on. Hallelujah. And when Jesus was bringing out this scenario, there were many righteous that did not fully understand that when they were ministering to the downtrodden, them that had a need, those that were hurting, them who desperately needed the touch of God, they did not know ministering to Christ Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus brought this out. Now I want you to understand the power of a visit. Amen. Do you not know what it means to somebody who is lonely? Do you not know what it means to somebody who Nobody cares about them. Do you not know what it means to somebody who is struggling for food and water, who's in prison and can't get nobody to visit them, who's in a nursing home and can't get nobody to come up and just sit there and spend time with them? Come on. Praise God. Do you not understand that when people like that receive a visitation from them that walk with Christ Jesus. It does wonders for them. Amen. 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 Praise God. Because even in situations such as this, many receive a touch from God. Amen. Are you listening to me? And they come under great conviction because they experience his love through his people. And what happens? 
The scripture breaks it out. <laughs> In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, Amen. the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, Amen. verse 16, he said, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Amen. See that? Amen. Every child of God is supposed to be full of good works. Amen. We can go to Acts chapter 9. The Bible talks about there was a young a, a sister in the church. Her name was Dorcas. She also was called Tabitha. And the scripture said she was full of good works. Amen? Notice it didn't say she was saved by works. Because when you get saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus, you are saved to do good works. You're not saved by your works. You're saved by the grace of God. When you put your faith in Christ Jesus, and when you get saved, we're supposed to be full of good works. Amen? Amen. This is why Jesus brought this out in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. He said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. How many know that the children of God are supposed to be proactive? Demonstrating the love of God. Amen. Hello? Amen. Amen. And this is what Jesus is speaking about in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 25. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And this is, this is why it is so important you understand the power of a visit. Amen. 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 When you go to the hospital or the nursing home. When you take time out to go into the prison and spend time with them souls, it means the world to them. Do you not understand the love of God that is reaching them, that is touching their hearts, that's breaking them down? The Holy Ghost begins to draw them because they are you listening to me? That's why he said, let your light so shine. We are called to be proactive in the kingdom. We're not called to sit on our rump and let it roast. Are you listening to me? We are called to action. We are called to demonstrate the love of God. That's why Jesus brought this out in the Gospel of Matthew. He said, the least you do to my little ones, you have done it unto me. Amen? Amen. That's why it's important to take some time out and visit them that are downtrodden, them that are hurting, them that need the touch of God. They need prayer. They need the devil cast out of them. Some of them just need a hug. Some of them, praise God, just need somebody to tell them how much you love them and then to show them afterwards how much you love them in Jesus' name. Amen. That's what we're talking about. The power of a visit. Because there was a time where God visited us. I'm reminded in the book of Acts, chapter 15. And verse number 14, where it is mentioned God visited 
the Gentiles. The text reads in verse number 14, Simeon has declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles. What was his reasoning for visiting them? To take out of them a people for his name. Amen. Hello? And when you go back to the book of Acts chapter 10, we see the household of Cornelius. Amen? Amen. Amen. Cornelius was a captain of a hundred men. He was one who was a pious man. He prayed always and he gave alms to the Hebrew people. Amen. And one day he was fasting, had been for four days, and God sent an angel to visit him Amen. and instruct him Amen. to go and call for one Peter, the apostle. He lodged in the house of Simon the Tech. Amen. And he's going to tell you what you must do to be saved. Amen. 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 And when Peter came to Cornelius' house and preached unto them Jesus, the Bible says that while he was preaching, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them. And they began to speak in tongues and magnify God. What was happening? God visited them and took out of them a people for his name. I'm talking about the power of of a visit. Amen. Hallelujah. Many don't understand the power of a visit. We're not talking about visiting people just to visit so you can gossip and talk about old times when you was living in sin. That ain't what we're talking about. Hallelujah. We talking about demonstrating the love of Jesus. Hello, somebody. We're not talking about you making stuff up as you go to fit your agenda. That is not what the Bible talking about. Hallelujah. It's talking about the love of Jesus being manifested among them that are downtrodden, them that are unsaved, them, amen, that need the touch of God. They need to know that Jesus is alive and that he saves and delivers. Praise God. Are you listening to me? And I can most certainly tell you there were many that got saved in the prison. There are many that got saved in the nursing home. There are many that got saved that were hungry and thirsty. There were many that got saved that were naked, praise God, when the righteous, amen, put their arms around them. They had a need. They were lost. They were sick and afflicted. Come on, somebody. That's why he said, let your light so shine that others might see. What do they need to see? That Jesus is real. That Jesus can save. That Jesus loves them. Praise God. But it's sad to say, we live in a day where many have no concern about the lost. They have no concern about them that are downtrodden, them that are hurting, them that are in need of the touch of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because when we go on in that particular chapter, of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25. Beginning at verse 41, he said, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Now listen to 
what he says about them that are on the left hand. And verse number 33 identifies that them on the left hand were the goats. Amen. Praise God. Amen. If you are a child of God, if you've been born of the Spirit, you should not have goat-like characteristics. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. There's too many people professing to be a sheep that follow the shepherd. Praise God. But they are demonstrating goat-like behavior. Amen. Come on. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He goes on to say in verse number 42, he said, For I was hungered, and you gave me no meat. I was hung, I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was a stranger. You took me not in. I was naked, and you clothed me not, sick and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee hungry, thirsty, a stranger, naked, sick or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, as much as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. Okay. Are you listening to me? Yeah. And this is why it's important that we examine ourselves. Because we are put to say, I'm a sheep. We are put to say, I'm born again. I love Jesus. I keep his commandments. But we're manifesting goat-like characteristics. Come on. Because uh, when you are righteous, uh, you do righteousness. Uh, you walk in the love of God. Uh, you allow the Holy Ghost to lead you, uh, to minister uh, to those uh, that need to be ministered to. Come on. Because it's all about uh, shining forth the light of Jesus Christ. Uh, are you listening to me? Praise God. Because we live in a time where there are many that profess the name Jesus Christ that are not living up Amen. to the standard. They show no concern for their neighbor. The scripture teaches us in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 36 through 40. It says the first and greatest commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and mind. And the second is like unto it, love thy neighbor as thyself. And we fall in short when it comes to loving our neighbor. We have gotten so caught up in ourselves. We got so caught up in our family members. Praise God. But we fail to understand that souls out there that are lost. There are souls out there that have a need. There are souls out there, praise God, that need to know that they matter, that God loves them, that they were fearfully and wonderfully made. Come on somebody, they were stepped on and stepped over and talked about and looked down Because God visited us. I can take you back to Ezekiel chapter 16. When God found Israel in her slop. And the scripture says, he cleaned her up. Entered into a covenant with her. And she became his. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All because of his mercy. 
he was willing to visit them. Amen. Because he saw destiny in his creation. Amen. Come on. Amen. He had purpose for their life. Are you listening to me? You find out that many of are members that are He brought destruction. 
all my steps according to your word. Put your words in my mouth that I might say what you have me to say. Lord, show me where you want to go. Tell me exactly where you want me to cast my net. Hallelujah. See, so you got to talk to God. You got to ask him. See, so you have not because you ask not. Hallelujah. You don't tell God what to do. And you don't premeditate in your mind what you want to do. And then you forge his name on the document and say, God told me to do this. And told me to do that. And you already premeditated what you wanted to do. Praise God. So we can't get in the flesh. Because when you do such a thing, you're going to get lazy. And you're going to break the law of God because you're not walking in love. In Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. <clears throat> Beginning in verse 8. The apostle brings it out. He said, oh no man anything but to love one another. And how many know that love is a action word? Right. What did we see in our foundational text? We saw the righteous in action. Amen? Amen? They that were hungry, they gave them food to eat. And them that were thirsty, they gave them water to drink. Them that were naked, they put clothes on their back. Them that were sick and in prison, they visited them. Amen. They spent time with them. They prayed with them. They gave them words of encouragement. And you don't know what they do for an individual. Come on. You giving them hope. You giving them something to cling on to. Hello. Because many of them don't think there's no hope for them. And they don't think nobody cares about them. And many of them just ready to lay down and die. And they think that when they shut their eyes, they don't have to suffer no more. They don't have to go through any sorrow anymore. Not knowing that it doesn't stop at death. Praise God. And this is why the saints must shine the light. We can't be doing all that talking. It's time to walk the walk. Amen. He said, oh, don't mean anything but to love one another. Amen. Amen. For he that <clears throat> loveth another has fulfilled the love. And that's one that's walking in the spirit. That's one that's keeping the commandments of God. That's one who's walking in his love. Amen. 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 First John chapter 4 said we we must be perfected in the love of God. That's what holiness is. Amen. Amen? Amen. We must be perfected. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In his love. He goes on to say in verse 9, For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, not, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this same name, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Amen. And you know how it is today. Many only love in word or in tongue. But the apostle teaches us in 1 John chapter 3. Mm -hmm. We're to love in deed and in truth. How many understand we must have godly motives? Amen. We must mean it Amen. from the bottom of our heart. Amen. 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 We must love indeed. Amen. God expects his people to love one another. Even as Christ loved us, God saw that we had a need. What was our need? We needed forgiveness. We needed healing. We needed 
salvation. And he sent his only begotten son. And that what it says in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world. Here comes the action part. That he gave his only begotten son. And what did his only begotten son do? Here comes the action part. He laid down his life. Why? He laid down his life, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Our sins had to be paid for, and Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin is left the crimson stain, but he washed me and made me white as snow. That's the power of the blood. How many know there's power in the blood? And it has never lost its power. There is power, power, wonder-working power is in the blood of the Lamb. Praise God. Amen? In verse 10 of Romans chapter 13, he said, Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. See that? This is how you know somebody ain't walking in the spirit. They went back to the flesh. And you will not be saved walking after the flesh. Amen. Amen. You're living below the standard of holiness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Amen. Amen. How many understand the power of a visit? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We cannot be isolated. We cannot be recluses. We can't get in the flesh, oh, I'll do it next week. And the very people you put off to next week die yeah. before you can ever get to them. Right. The very people that you procrastinated and say, I'm going to wait till next week, the Muslims got to them. The Mormons got to him. The Jehovah's Witness got to him before you did. Because you lazy. Amen. And you call up in yourself what you want to do, what you don't want to do. Right. Praise God. And that's why the will of God cannot be done among his people because we're too much in ourselves. We got our own mind made up what we want to do. Because the truth be told, we don't like living outside of our comfort zone. We want to stay in our comfort zone. But God calls us out of our comfort zone as he did our forefather Abraham when he told him to get thee out of the earth of the child and he will call you out of your comfort zone. Amen. Amen. Now we making up all these excuses because we have our own agenda. Praise God. That is not being led by the Spirit. Because the Holy Ghost will lead you to do things you don't want to do. You know why? Because the things that you don't want to do, that's your will. Amen. The things that you want to do, I should say, that's your will. But he's going to lead you to do things that you don't want to do because the things you don't want to do are the things of the Spirit of God. He's not going to lead you to do what you want to do. It don't have to feel comfortable to you to do it. Amen. Amen. Am I making sense? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God visited us and he wants to use us as honorable vessels to visit others. Yes, you're going to be rejected by others. And that's when you shake the dust off your feet and you keep moving. You encourage yourself in the Lord and keep moving. Don't allow what others say or what others do discourage you and cause you to come off the battlefield. 
You got to stay on the battlefield and keep fighting. Amen. Keep power. Keep walking in love. Because I'm going to tell you, my brothers and sisters, there are people waiting for us. Because they're sitting in the regions of the shadow of death. And they need to see the light of Christ within the hearts of God's people. We can't hide the light. Isn't that what he said? Praise God. He said, no man put a light on a candlestick right. and hide it under a bush. Right. That's what many people are doing. They're not shining forth anything. They're hiding the light. They're ashamed of the gospel. They don't want to offend anybody. They don't want to lose a family member. They don't want their friend to turn on them. Praise God. Praise God. Well, I come to tell you in the name of Jesus Christ, you're not going to make it. Amen. You're not going to make it. Because when you choose to follow Jesus, you're going to suffer persecution. Amen. You're going to go through tribulation. You're going to have loved ones turning their backs on you. And they will betray you for Jesus' name's sake. You got to be ready for all of that. Do we want that to happen? Absolutely not. Hallelujah. But it's going to happen because Jesus has already prophesied that these things shall be among his beloved. And you can't compromise. You cannot afford to compromise because your soul will be lost because you compromised your faith. Amen. And God didn't receive glory out of that situation Amen. because you denied his name. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. How many understand the power of a visit? Amen. It's important that we understand that we visit them that are in need. That we visit them that need a touch from God. Amen. That's important. Amen. Amen. Because when you're saved, he puts his agape in your heart. And then he says, love your neighbor. Amen. That warrants action. Not just sitting back saying, I love everybody and don't do nothing. Right. Don't witness to nobody. Don't feed nobody. Don't clothe nobody. Don't visit nobody. We can care less about anybody. All we care about is ourselves and our little two or three people in our family. And that's it. But I'm on my way to heaven. Well, that those are not sheep characteristics. Amen. We're teaching against the pricks. We're being stubborn because we desire to do what feels good to us. And at the same time, we're resisting the Holy Ghost and rejecting the gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? 